Yesterday, Michael revisited the Moto X after five months on the market. In that same time, how has it fared against the keys in your pocket, the concrete outdoors, or all the other harsh elements? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Moto X Durability Report. This video was originally supposed to be made on Tuesday, then on Wednesday, and then Thursday. It's now Friday, and I'm just getting around to it, thanks to a lovely little winter storm called Janus. Wait, why was a video of my Moto X stalled because of little winter weather? Because at the beginning of the month, I sent my custom Moto X to Brandon so he could try it out before buying one of his own. And last Friday, he shipped it back to me. Here we are with the Moto X back in my possession after a brutal two weeks with Butterfingers Miniman. And that's where this story begins, because sending the Moto X to Brandon in any other instance might have been a mistake. You see, I'd been carrying the custom Moto X almost non-stop since August 21st. I didn't drop it, I didn't beat and bang it around, and when I shipped it to Brandon, it was in near mint condition. There may have been one or two blemishes, but they were only visible under close inspection. Brandon, when I told him I needed the Moto X back for a durability report, admitted he'd dropped it a few times and he, quote, gave it some life experience. The chassis took some hits, but we'll get to that in a second. Yesterday, Michael published his Moto X after the buzz video and detailed the ins and outs of the phone five months after its release, explaining how well it's held up against the test of time and, likewise, the competition. For Michael's full take on the Moto X five months later, be sure to check out his after the buzz episode. But how does the Moto X casing fare against life itself? The insides of your pockets, a hardwood floor, or a concrete sidewalk? Let's take a gander at both the Moto X's in my possession, one of which is five months old, used by Brandon and yours truly, and another which is a month and a half old and has endured my typical use patterns, plus the hard nature of a trade show like CES. Let's start with my use patterns and how I typically handle the device. To say I baby a phone is an exaggeration. I'm as gentle as I can be on equipment as I like to preserve the newness as long as possible and drag out any possibility of resale value in the event something like an ebony wrapped Moto X were to launch just weeks after I ordered my own custom Moto X. But I don't take the time to gently place the Moto X on a tabletop, I don't put that much thought or care into it, but I do make an effort not to drop it on hard surfaces. As we saw in the inaugural durability report with the iPhone 5, Brandon is less careful with his phones. He lives by the philosophy that they're just pieces of equipment and they're meant to be used, not babied. And after just two weeks in his possession, he said he dropped it twice on hardwood. At a glance, you wouldn't even notice. There's no separation on the front and back panels, the buttons don't rattle, and the phone is in perfect working condition. If you take a close-up tour around the device, however, you will notice a few bruises. Along the bottom edge, there's a tiny crater in the matte finished plastic flanked by another gash. On the front side, each corner in the bezel has either a scrape or a ding and there are a few hairline scratches and nicks on the glass I don't recall from before. The worst part of the damage is along the right edge of the glass, where it appears to have cracked and one tiny piece has chipped, though it's still in place. For two drops, I'd say it fared pretty well. Michael also admitted accidentally dropping his Moto X on concrete from about chest high, and it suffered similar damage, some nicks and gashes in the plastic around the front and back. But the Moto X seems rather resilient, even against concrete, the new Moto X I received just before the middle of December looks practically brand new. There's one tiny nick along the top edge, and I chose the model with the woven back, which has a soft touch feeling to its backside in contrast to the hard matte finish on the non-woven models. On day two, I noticed a long, faint scratch had appeared in the coating on the backside. And although it's still there and visible at certain angles, it seems to have faded significantly in the five weeks since. Overall, the Moto X is a resilient little piece of kit. It can withstand tiny bumps and dings or even chest high drops onto concrete without suffering too much visual damage. Of course, no matter the size of the bumps and scratches, they're all equally heartbreaking. So we wouldn't recommend slamming yours into anything hard or abrasive intentionally. If it does, rest easy knowing your Moto X will likely come away with minimal damage. And Motorola's nano coating even protects it from the occasional splashes to boot. It isn't the most ruggedized phone to date or even currently but we definitely rate it above average for sturdiness and durability, which shouldn't come as much of a surprise when you consider who made it. That's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to click the thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one in the future. Leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions and follow us on all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at Pocket Now. I'm Taylor Martin, you can find me on Twitter at Casper Tech, and I will see you next time.